This will be uh, a 1969 amplifier, my version 4. It's an AliExpress kit. Must be this on the board, I don't know yet. This one will not strictly be a JLH 1969 because at least two of the transistors are FETs. It is a kit. We'll take a look at it. Certainly has the look and feel of JLH 69. The classic decoupling of the um, input bias. This designer elected to put the variable uh, resistor above in the upper half of the uh, voltage divider. This of course sets the X point which is over here to half of VCC. A PNP bipolar followed by an NPN bipolar. A current setting resistor here. Now we have some resistors that are not shown on the original design. There, I, I don't believe these are in the original design. I don't believe these are. These are added all four of them because of the change to the FET. A classic out and we have a 510 ohm resistor on the output. Still only two signal capacitors, one in and one out. The board again, like amplifiers 1 and 2, is 50 millimeters square. I have a bill of materials. Here is the AliExpress sellers page. There's no recommendations about current or voltage. Well, 3 to 60 and 1 watt to 30. We'll see about that. There are instructions. Adjust the midpoint, that's the X value. And adjust the current. It doesn't say to what. Ten to sixty milliamps. That certainly is not very much current. Uh, and it tells us where to measure the X point which potentiometer to use for setting the X point. A pair of these two channels, $11.20 free shipping. Once again, all resistors except for the ones in the output stage are very low wattage and they're all the same wattage. There's why I called it what I did. It's a board marking, Senyon 1969M. I love this design. It puts this filter capacitor, output capacitor, directly in line with whatever fastener you intend to use to secure this to the heat sink. Why couldn't they have put it in the middle and allowed free access to the heat sink devices? So what do we have? Again, we have screw terminals for in, out, and power. They do provide insulators and screws with the lock washers and flat washers for these FETs. Now, they're not insulated at the back, so this is exposed voltage. But they are all plastic fronted, so you can just put the screw through without a bushing. 
and the screw will be at the heat sink potential. These little electrolytics are this decoupling capacitor. Well, pair. These are the input capacitors. So I'll go ahead and assemble this and we'll get it ready. This is the amplifier number four. Uh, same test jig. I guess I can slide it back a little bit. I've set it at 24 volts, approximately one amp. It's been running now for almost an hour. The transistors, the body of the transistor reads around 40, worst case 47C. The heat sink itself is much cooler, around 30 degrees C. I certainly have no problem at all putting my hand on the heat sink. That's 50 hertz. Put is 513.513. Again, an RMS. I'm using RMS because that's what uh, JLH did in his article. 50 hertz. We don't have a good straight line there. It's a, a little bent top and bottom. 50 kilohertz. Uh, I'm going to just show one cycle. See this little ditzy on the uh, generator? Let me disconnect the generator from the amplifier. See that? Corner squares off. So this little difficulty that's happening there is coming from the amplifier. And in response, we've got this. I'll freeze this and try to expand it. You can see we've got a damped signal there, maybe. And we've got a put it back and scan. You see that versus that, and that's imposed on the signal generator. 50 kilohertz, 0.51 RMS in, and 9.5, which is a little more than 10 watts out. Go to uh, 1 kilohertz. I think we've seen better rise times. And we'll expand this. And you see it's still there at one kilohertz. Ten kilohertz becomes more noticeable. Let's try one hundred hertz. Now we're back to the JLH type low frequency response. I don't think it's as good as number three. Well, we're done now with all four amplifiers. Uh, heat is spread all through the heat sink now. My heat sink looks like Swiss cheese from all the different holes I've drilled. The body of the transistors is now as hot as I've seen it, but I don't think it'll get any hotter. Well, that winds up the hood amplifier series. If you've made it to amplifier 4 or episode part 5, 
more power to you. Please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Thank you.